Let me just check now. All right, let me just check. I got to wait for it to pop up because I mistakenly scheduled this four in the morning and I just realized. Oh, <laughs> are we on YouTube as well or only Rumble? Uh, Rumble, but I've announced on YouTube and you can okay. upload because we get, actually I get about 400, 500 here too. Oh, great. Incredible. Yeah, because people I got to start using here. Rumble. Yeah, as an alternate platform <clears throat> because people know I'm here. So yeah. that's why, but I can't find it. We got to wait a few minutes, brother. No, no worries, brother. Sorry. No worries at all. Right. Here it goes. It's right here. Now, one second, guys, because I'm also streaming this on Facebook. The reason why I can't do it on Rumble for 90 days, it, it will take just one of these guys to flag anything I do and get me a third strike. So I don't trust JP Uncut. My my strike was never removed, brother. I don't know what to do to get rid of it. The one for the, the show yeah, well, we did? 90 days it will be removed. 90 days? Are you kidding yes, me? Sir. Really? Yeah, so that's why I'm treading lightly. So <clears throat> here's yeah. how it works. If you got a strike and they don't remove it, even though you've appealed it, yeah, 90 days, they'll remove it. 90 days from the time they gave you the strike. Yeah. So I got two strikes. If in 90 days, God willing, by October, nothing happens, the strikes are removed, you start from scratch. Okay, so good. So that means any nasty troll can go and flag a video or They've done it. a post, and then they can give me a third, and they delete my channel. It's over. Yeah. Uh, so this is yeah. I was worried. So right now we're live. Just something explaining to William about strikes, why we're on Rumble. So guys, hit the like button, share this because we want to make Rumble great again. Maraga, not Maga, Maraga, make Rumble great again. So we've also, he's also shared a post on Facebook, not, yeah, on Facebook and YouTube. We called out JP, let him come and let's see if he's mad enough because <laughs> I know the guy's whining like a little narcissist, like a demon saying that I insulted his mother. Yes, because he was insulting the Blessed Mother, thinking that he's doing Christ a favor, thinking he's not insulting her. And because he's another narcissistic, raby tool of Satan, I don't consider him a Christian until he repents. He now is taking clips of me using my image because it's clickbait. He wants people to come and subscribe to him. Yep. So now we're going to call out this fraud. Let's see if he's a man. And he's not a Mohammedan pretending to be a Christian. Let him come and put in our place. Now, he so won't do it. he won't do guys, it. share the link, hit the like button. We're going to have to stand rumble. I have to stay away from YouTube till October, God willing, till the strikes are removed. Because yeah. it only takes someone like him, a low life like him, who's worse than a Mohammedan because he masquerades as a Christian, to get me a third strike. May God not allow that to happen. The Lord own our ministries, own our channels, destroy censorship, own us. And may the Spirit speak through us for his glory. So, brother... Let me make I'll a brief comment, you. brother. Yeah, let me make a brief comment. I want the audience to know. Look, um, there are a number of things that, that are evident. When the brother Sam debated over, over with uh, Donnie on the limited atonement, that guy JP was begging me to go into his channel. I'm guessing to debate or whatever. What the guy wants is he wants attention. He yeah. wants to build his platform. And he wants to try and get people to help build his platform. I want to be clear for people tuning in. I want to be very clear. I do not think JP Uncut is good at all. No, he's I think he's terrible. But a number of comments are made that I thought, and I let Sam know, it would be incredibly valuable for you people, Orthodox, Catholic, uh, people that are that are thinking of converting, even our dear evangelical friends that want to know the apostolic Christian truth, to talk about the early church, to talk about the Bible. So by virtue of him being a nasty person, him making his nasty comments, we're here for the glory of God, and we really don't think that he's even worth anybody's time. So do not worry about the arguments he put forth. They're terrible. In fact, to tell you what kind of coward, filthy lowlife he is, I have no respect for him. <clears throat> and now, if he repents, we'll forgive him and embrace him. He came twice on my stream yard. I saw him, gave him the link. Instead of bringing up the arguments, like a little narcissist, <laughs> He stopped complaining about me calling his mother a whore. Now, for the record, let me just be upfront with you. <clears throat> I'm not politically correct. William is much more gracious and just as bold as I am. I cannot handle if someone, <clears throat> someone thinks he's doing Jesus a favor by trying to rob his blessed mother of the honor and the dignity that the Lord Jesus has conferred on her. Amen. So <clears throat> he's using arguments that have been demolished. He's using arguments that are outdated to try to show that Mary did not remain a virgin, as if we haven't heard those arguments, as if I, as a Protestant, didn't know those arguments. But he wants 
to make a name for himself. He wants people to view him as a legitimate apologist. And he's pathetically bad. I group him with Kelly Powerless. These guys are two pathetic clowns. They're jokes. He's worse. They want to make a name for themselves because they want to live off the support of people by doing apologetics <laughs> instead of getting off their mommy's <clears throat> couches and living <clears throat> off of mommy, again, metaphorically. Okay, yeah. I'm just saying so I don't because this this guy is such a demonic tool of Satan. He'll take my statements literally to try to demonize him because he's of his father, the devil. Yep. He's a joke. He will not last in a debate more than five minutes. He no. is a tool of Satan, a Bible butcher. Now, it is sad that there are brothers in Christ that share platforms with him, but that's up to them. They're grown men. May the Lord bless them and preserve them and open their hearts and minds to the character of these dogs. There are false Christians, false brethren masquerading as servants of Christ that are in our midst. May God give us discernment to know who they are, call them out, protect the flock, and may the Holy Spirit save William and I not Amen. to be wolves, not to be deceived, and not to be the thing that the Spirit hates and save us from that for the glory of the Father, Son, and Spirit. And Amen. I'm going to read one passage, but brother, if you can do us a favor, you pray for us and I'll follow you. Your Amen. Lead. Begin with the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you for allowing us to gather here today, for allowing us to be able to share the incredible a wonderful truth found in your inerrant word, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be able to gather here and to talk about those incredible men that finished the race, those great early church fathers that lived lives, lives of sanctity, those amazing men that we can call on to intercede for us, to draw us closer to you, Lord, those great saints that surround us like a great cloud of witnesses, Lord, thank you for allowing us to gather here and to share and to ba bask in the beauty of the faith, Lord. We thank you so much, Lord, and we ask that you untie my tongue, you untie the brother's tongue, you allow all the trolls to go elsewhere, Lord, and only those that are really, truly seeking you, Lord, we ask for them to truly be edified, to truly be enlightened, to truly fall in love with you, Lord, to fall in love with your incredible word. And Lord, we ask all of this in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Let me address another effeminate queer bait, Father Pro, uh, because you're another effeminate queer bait tool of Satan. Yes, Jesus would call people whores. He did it in your Gospels. He talked about a perverse and adulterous generation. Yep. And yes, he calls people whores throughout the scriptures. Read your Bible, Ezekiel 23. But because you are an effeminate queer bait, thinking you know Jesus, you want to impose your standard of Christianity on us. No one gives a damn for your opinion. Return to your vomit. You lowlife, I have no respect for you guys. Now, with that said, before we begin, this is the thing I was trying to warn Sig of. And by the way, I don't have much respect for Sig either, S-I-I-G. I, too, think he is a neophyte, a greenhorn, who shouldn't be debating. He's not qualified. I went on his channel to try to help him. But because he's too arrogant and too full of himself, maybe because it's of his age, uh, instead of hearing me out, he thought he understood the argument, embarrassed himself, and had to correct him, and then tried to pretend to be Christ-like when I called JP a wolf, a tool of Satan, <clears throat> a false brethren. So I told him, shut that up, get the out of here, dude. You're a joke. And you can see, even though <clears throat> JP is a joke and his arguments are bad, I was told when it came to the issue of the fathers, Sig got schooled for misapplying a comment from Clement. Now, yeah. with that said, let me show you why. I got told that too. Yeah, they shared that with me as well. Yeah. yeah. Let me show you why I call him a fake. I'm going to show you why. And that his nice attitude, they say even Arius was a sweetheart of a guy and that Athanasius was rough. If yeah. you guys think being nice is a sign you're a Christian, you are deceived. And I have to say you're foolish. May the Lord convict you to repent. You can be a jerk. And still be a servant of Christ, and you can be nice and a tool of Satan. And I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to show let, you let me let me make one brief comment to back you up. There are writings that call Arius an eloquent preacher. These are from people that recognize he was a heretic, but they tell you, be careful. He was an eloquent preacher, meaning he was able, he could tickle your ears. But just because they tickle your ears do not mean that they're teaching you the truth. Yep. In fact, here, let me show you why I said JP. He pretends to be nice because he's an effeminate coward, queer bait. He is a lowlife tool of Satan because you can see he manifests, but he tries to control it. 
because he wants to give the pretext of being nice. But see, here's what God says about servants of Satan who think they are ministers of Christ. Here it is. Yep. Watch here. From Scripture, if you don't like it, from Scripture, 2 Corinthians 11, 13 and 15. Here is the inspired words that the Spirit moved Paul to record for us. Yep. Here, pay attention. You effeminate queerbaits that disgust me. Don't come to my channel. I will cuss you out. I don't want you here. I'm not politically correct. If you can respect the rules, you'll learn. You think you are pious and better. I will then humiliate you to give you a taste of medicine and may the Holy Spirit save us from being the thing that the Spirit hates and fill us for the glory of Jesus Christ. Here, 2 Corinthians 11, 13 and 15. 2 Corinthians 11, 13 and 15. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Did you effeminate queer baits, father pro, you filthy, wicked, <clears throat> spineless coward? Did you see it? Satan himself will appear as an angel of light, meaning he'll appear as righteous and good. That's his MO to deceive you. So what does it say about his servants like JP? Now, JP can repent, but until he does, I don't consider him a Christian, especially in his jihad against the Holy Mother and the ancient teachings of the church, because he doesn't know the Bible. He doesn't know the Bible. Like Satan, he butchers scriptures to his humiliation. Now, JP, we called you out. Show up. We he even posts this. Thing. Show up. Here's your chance to shine. But you're a coward. Like a Mohammedan, you will hide. Here it is, verse 15. Therefore, it is not surprising if his ministers also disguise themselves as ministers of righteousness. Did you see that, Sig? That's why I rebuked and said, shut the up and get the out here, because you too are naive and foolish because you don't know the Bible. Even though you're trying to defend the community of saints, you're too green, too arrogant, not teachable. May the Lord humble you to learn, and may the Lord destroy our pride as well whose end will be according to their deeds. Does everyone see that in Scripture? Does everyone see that in Scripture? Is this in your Bible, guys, that the ministers of Satan, used of Satan, even though they don't think they're used of Satan, because the opponents of Paul thought they were Christians. They thought Paul was a false apostle. They thought they were true Christians. The ministers of Satan will appear as ministers of righteousness, humble and holy and pious. Why are you guys so naive? Why are you guys so naive? Yep. When will you Christians wake up? When will you stop being naive and be like the holy prophets, holy apostles, filled with the same Holy Spirit? And I pray the Spirit fills us as he filled them, like Elijah, like Paul and the early church, that rebuked people, insulted people, even came to blows, like St. Nicholas. Let me, let me tell you one thing, brother. It is the idea that effeminate Christianity is attractive that is allowing us to get overrun by Islam, yep. that is allowing us to lose people in, from our churches. Look at what verse 15 says. I want to hammer it home. Look at what the, what the inspired text says. Therefore, it is not surprising if its ministers also disguise themselves as what ministers of righteousness, yep. whose end will be according to their deeds. I don't care how nice somebody comes across as i don't care if they're pretending to be nice in order to get more people to follow them if they are spewing heresy i made the comment the other day any kind of lie is from the pit of hell and if you don't like that i say it if you don't like because the other day i called the idea of universalism a damnable lie people couldn't stand that look it is biblical when something is wrong and it's from the pit of hell you should call it what it is, a damnable lie. And stop being so terrified of offending people. If all you're afraid of is offending people to have more followers, you don't belong in ministry. Yep. And let me give you a few more passages. We're going to begin. Uh, just to correct Jay Pinky, you're partially correct. You're not entirely correct. Jay Pinky, <laughs> you're partially correct, not entirely That's why I say, help me to help you guys. Respect the rules. Chime in less. Only engage us. Let the Holy Spirit work through us. Let us be his mouthpieces in this session. You start your session, the Spirit use you. Do not chime in and distract because I'm going to start blocking people. Listen and engage us so you can learn, so you can take it to the next level and become much better than us. It is not true that outsiders, you always maintain peace. You maintain peace to outsiders unless it's necessary to rebuke them. So, Jay Pinky, let me correct. 
your selective reading of scripture. Here it is, Acts 13, 6 to 12. What does Paul say to an outsider? What does Paul say to an outsider? And then I'm going to give you the example of Elijah filled with the spirit as Paul was. And then what our Lord says to make a judgment call to determine when someone is a dog and a pig. That's Jesus. Jesus is telling you, you have to discern by the spirit. This man is a filthy dog, a vile dog. This guy is a filthy swine pig. Do not engage them. Just rebuke them. That's Jesus. But let's go to Acts 13, 6 to 12. And when they, did, when they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, they found a magician, a Jewish false prophet, whose name was Bar-Jesus. A Jewish false prophet. So he's not an insider, insider Jay Pinky. Who was with the proconsul, Sergius Paulus, a man of intelligence. This man summoned Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But Elimas, the magician, for so is his, his name is translated, was opposing them. Seeking to turn the proconsul away from today. In other words, he was trying to contradict them, saying, no, that's not true. That doesn't make sense. That's false. Now watch. Did the Holy Spirit fill Paul to be just peaceful and be timid and walk away? You effeminate queer baits, I think, being nice all the time, sign that you're Christ-like. But Saul, who is also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit. Fixed his gaze on him and said, you who are full of deceit and fraud. You son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness. And you know he's speaking passion. That's like, you son of the devil. You, will you not cease to make crooked the straight ways of the Lord? You see now why I call JP a dog, a spiritual bastard, filth, a spiritual swine, a tool of Satan? Because he's perverting the truth, the ancient tradition, the ancient past, <clears throat> the ancient interpretation, because he thinks he's a servant of the Lord. He thinks that. Now, he can be. But he's not. For now, he's an enemy. Treat yep. him as such, like Anthony Rogers, Kelly Powers, and James White. You yep. saw how Kelly Powers manifested in my debate and with William. He wouldn't shut up. He would keep yep. barking, trying to talk over William and I, embarrassing himself, going into five million directions because he's a joke. Got and I want to ask you a question about a debate you had right after we finish this. Yeah, brother. You enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease to make crooked the straight ways of the Lord? Now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you will be blind and not see the sun for a time. And immediately a mist and a darkness fell upon him. And he went about seeking those who would lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had happened, being astonished at the teaching of the Lord. All right. Now, remember, he's filled with the Holy Spirit, J. Pinky. And he's talking to an outsider, a magician, a false prophet. He wasn't being peaceful with him because he saw he was perverting the truth, opposing the truth, and trying to keep people away from the truth. Elijah, filled with the Spirit, mocks the prophets of Baal and the prophets of Ashtar, Baal's consort. There was about 850 of them. Now it happened at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, call out with a loud voice because they kept crying out to Baal and cutting themselves to get his attention and silent because God silenced that demon. For he's a God. Now watch the mockery. For either he's occupied, maybe he's too busy, or relieving himself. The Hebrew means that maybe your God is in the toilet going to the bathroom. Or is on a journey, or perhaps he's asleep and needs to be awakened. Do I need to constantly remind you of feminine queer baits? Your form of Christianity is not biblical. Are you reading the same Bible we're reading? Yep. Okay, good. Where's the coward? He's here. Let's get him the link. All right. Give him Where link. are you? Uh, here are you, son of Satan. Come on up. Don't now appeal to mommy, mommy issues. Come and debate your position. And don't try to do what Kelly Powerless did. Come on up. I don't see him. Where's the coward? Where? Come on up, coward. Don't bark and appeal to your mommy and mommy issues. Get to the issues. Come on up. Good. Now, let me read what Jesus says about dogs like JP. Okay. Do not give what is holy to dogs. So Jesus is telling you to make a judgment call. Determine whether this guy's a dog or a pig. So why are we silencing him? To protect people who think that this dog is used of the Lord. Do not give what is holy to dogs and do not throw your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. So if he's here, there's a link. Why did someone say he's here? Anyway, come here, make our day. But with that said, brother, tell us about the debate you had in Spanish that God gave you a victory from a Spanish person who was seeking to also insult the Blessed Mother and how he manifested. And they can watch the debate. I'm going to bring yep. it up on your channel. And it's only in Spanish and how 100%. his 
followers are manifesting with blasphemies. Yeah, his followers are very, very, very maniacal. They're just not well in the head at all. Uh, they're crazed and they are utilized. L let me be very clear. The Protestant his Spanish community are utilizing, and anybody in the audience watching right now, they can confirm with me. They are utilizing arguments that we have blown out of the water from the 1990s and early 2000s. They're utilizing them and they haven't gone beyond that. Here's the one thing that I got really, really annoyed by. Now, I'm very good friends with a, uh, um, a very good Catholic brother by the name of Hugo Delgado. Now, Hugo reached out to me, brother, and told me about a few of these guys. It's under video. Right there it is. There it is. By the way, you brothers and sisters, head over there. Flood the comment section over there. Flood it. Um, so Hugo told me that there were a group of blasphemers. And one particular guy was going around buying statues of Mary and smashing them. Wow. Disgusting guy. This is about half a year ago. I refuted him, and I had an open panel in Spanish for him to join and debate me. Never showed up. Wouldn't dare in a million years. So I get an email from apparently their top Greek scholar. That's the guy I debated, Winston Medina. So he reaches out Greek to me. Scholar? Says, yeah, he's a Greek scholar. So he reaches out to me, tells me he wants to debate. We agree to debate the assumption of marrying. During the debate, I expose him as a fraud when it comes to the Greek. He doesn't know how to utilize any of the Greek databases. He got the form of the Greek word wrong from Revelation 11. Couldn't do basic research on Greek. Made blunder after blunder after blunder. And even worse, began to utilize fake patristic quotes. Anybody that is a Greek scholar can utilize the TLG, the Thesaurus Linger Grecia. If he was legit and not a fraud, he would have been able to double check the quotations and the source material he used. He got exposed as a mega fraud, brother, a mega fraud. So now their community are going bonkers, furious, because me, a guy who debates maybe one time in Spanish a year, went into their world, smoked their very best guy, and exposed him as a fraud. Now they're going bonkers, brother. But I have one more message because Winston Medina, he's bilingual. One more. Winston, I told you that I was going to teach you a lesson when it comes to Holy Mother Mary. I told you that what happens at the end of the day, if you try to trash the Catholic faith, eventually somebody's going to come along and they're going to trash your little sandcastle that you built. That's exactly what I did. For the glory of God. No glory and honor to me at all. All for the glory of God, brother. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. So remember, mm -hmm. I used to be a staunch anti-Catholic. I know where they're coming from. But one thing, and I have witnesses to this. We're going to go into the By the way, we have the largest crowd on Rumble yet. We have 525. For Rumble, that's amazing. Amen. See, we're making Rumble great again. Mraga, make Rumble great again. Even Jennifer, who watched in Spanish, says he was insulting you in, in throughout the debate. Yeah, he was. Now, just to let you know, God saw that when I was hearing the evidence from the early church fathers. He saw my conviction. I was getting troubled. God knows my heart. I'll give an answer to him. I have friends who are still Protestants who are sad that I'm now no longer Protestant and no longer Calvinist that will tell you my journey years ago. They saw I was struggling. God used the debates with Catholics and James White. God used Dave Armstrong, who's an online. He, he's an apologist who does written rebuttals yeah. that kept hammering white and others with the fathers and i kept reading them and hearing them at first i tried to ignore that i didn't want to hear it. i didn't want to hear about it but then i couldn't and the more i heard what athanasius believed or ignatius believed or justin martyr believed the more the spirit kept convict me and all glory to the holy spirit my prayer is from my heart the holy spirit owns all of us fills all of us seals all of us saves all of us our loved ones my daughters Amen. Because he is the one sent to preserve us as long as we don't resist him. May we never resist him but be in love with him. May he have mercy on me and forgive me because of my failures. Kept convicting me. I got to the first step. And I'm just giving you a little background because I know where JP is coming from. But because he's not humble, not gracious, yeah. I treat a dog accordingly until he humbles himself. I got to the point where I said, all right, Catholics and Orthodox are Christians. Why? Here, let me tell you why. Let me tell you how I got there. Because these Christians believed a lot what Catholics and Orthodox believe. 
infant baptism, water baptism, regeneration, Eucharist, flesh and blood of Christ, intercession of saints, prayers for the dead. I said, well, if these are the true followers of Christ, because I could not for the life of me say these were heretics who are burning in hell. That would be blasphemy because these were the true believers protecting the faith from heretics. And I knew that. Athanasius. Then I said, all right, that means Eastern Orthodox Catholics, they are brothers and sisters in Christ. So I soften, but I still struggle. I would have bad days, good days. So in my mind, I said, the fathers were believers in spite of their errors. See, this is how I'm wrestling in my mind. Yep. They're mistaken, but they're not damnable her heretics. And their heresies are not damnable. God overlooked them and forgave them. So I go, well, if God could forgive them and overlook their mistakes, then he can do it for Catholics and Orthodox, so they're my brothers and sisters. But then I started thinking about it more in light of the promise of Christ. Wait, if the Spirit is going to be with the church and the Spirit raised up the bishops to succeed the apostles and the Spirit would empower the bishops to expose heresy and preserve the scriptures and so on, then the Spirit, one thing he will not do is allow the Christians as a majority, as a consensus, or unanimously, unanimously, hold to damnable teaching or even mistaken views. Yep. So these views cannot be wrong. It's my Protestantism that's wrong. 100%, brother. And it took me over 10 years. Now we got the punk here. Good. I was there as well. Good, you're here now. Now hopefully you're going to address the issues. All right. Brother, I, I'd be even be willing, and, and JP, if he's ever seen anything I've done, he knows I'm an unbiased moderator. You two want to debate? Let's I'll be the moderator. I, I'm as unbiased as can be. Sure. I've moderated okay. I've moderated debates with Turretin Van, some of the top Protestants, even atheists. I'll be as unbiased as can be. So don't take it personally. I don't consider you Christian. So just keep it professional. Same here, brother. You know that, brother. There's no no hard issues. So come on, let's, let's get. So going. what what is your argument about the second century? Yeah. So I'm not a church father's expert. My my main thing is this: I don't believe that anywhere in the Bible we have an example of anybody on earth praying to a saint in heaven. <laughs> Right, yes, So I believe the saints are alive. I believe that the saints could be aware. I believe in Revelation. I believe in Maccabees. I believe in these right. scriptures. You believe in Maccabees, right? Wow. Yes, sir. Very good. Excellent. Now, you're number on, one. You're on the step hall, you're doing. Let me just correct them, though. Stop arguing from silence. That's not a good argument. Just because okay. you cannot show something from scripture doesn't mean it's <laughs> not true. You know that's a bad way of argument. If you're a Christian and not a Muslim, don't use those arguments. But secondly, you're incorrect. Because if you go to 2 Maccabees 15, 11 to 17, yep. there you find Judas Maccabees interacting with Onias and Jeremiah, and he sees them praying and interceding for God's people on earth. And you just said dead. you Maccabees. And, and that's they were dead. All right. So when they were interacting with each other, was it in a vision or and was so, it on well, this realm to that realm? Let me, let me correct your gross misunderstanding of what a vision okay. is. It shows, again, you don't know the Bible. In mm -hmm. Matthew 17, verses 1 to 9. So you should have been listening to me because I already addressed these canards. That's fine. Matthew, Matthew 17, verses 1 to 9. When Jesus was transfigured, did that really happen on the mount? Yes, it did. No, it called it a vision in verse 9. That's fine. Well, no, 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 no. It's not fine. It'll mm -hmm. be consistent with your argument. I'm consistent. Are you hearing yourself? Yeah. Go you ahead said, and respond. That's a vision. Go ahead and cook and then I'll respond. Say it go again? Ahead. No, I said go ahead and cook and I'll respond. No, no, it's not a respond. You said... Well, mm -hmm. if that's a vision, whether it's a vision or not, it doesn't deny its reality. Yeah, let me let me explain to you where I differ with you on that. Thank you for that response. Where I differ with you on that is that I don't deny that there can be manifestations of humans on earth communicating with saints in heaven. That's but not typically when that happens, let me let me let me respond. Oh, I don't want to rant that... because you changed the argument. That's what well, I'm let me to... let me be very quickly. My position is is that people on earth cannot communicate with saints in heaven on Where's this particular realm. Where's the verse? So if there's a vision or something like that, I don't deny that. Where's the verse? Give me I the can. verse that says people on earth cannot communicate with those in heaven. You made an assertion. Chapter and verse because your soul is Yeah, so when I read the Bible, right, all of the prayers, when the Bible is talking about prayers, all those prayers are always directed towards God. So my thing is yeah, this. That was my argument. I used to use that argument. Let no, me that's know. fine. That's fine. Let me let me correct you because you didn't okay, simply say you didn't simply say I don't find evidence. You say they cannot to make a positive assertion means the burden is on you to show they cannot. Where does the Bible say they cannot listen to your arguments? 
Show me where it says they cannot do so. You're arguing from silence. That's pathetically bad argumentation. I want you to now present the positive case for your assertion. They <laughs> cannot do so. That's what you said. Give me the verse. Yeah, so I believe we can do anything, right? We can, right? We have the, I could pray to a frog. We can do anything. Well, why do you but make it hard? Hold but, on, but let JP, me, hold let me, on. As, as a moderator, ahead, let me let me interject briefly. Go ahead. You are me. not answering this question, my friend. Yeah. As, try to talk. stick to answering it. You're, you're completely mm -hmm. avoiding it. If you want to stick to answering now, I'm just trying to be fair here. Answer okay, the question. Enough. Don't okay. go on tangents. You made yeah, two yeah. assertions. You ran from them. But I'm going to hold you your feet to the fire. Okay, what's First, your question? Ask me one more time. Okay, twice I asked you. But I'm going to ask you a third time, and you made two points. Number one, you okay. said they cannot do so. Where does the Bible say they can't do so? Don't give me a okay. preach and a sermon and a Very story. Good. Let me make it short. The Bible does not say that we cannot or we can to the good. saints. Good. Okay. Okay, so you're just saying, uh, now I'm <laughs> respecting you. Now you're getting my respect. Now, no, I respect you too, brother. I'm, I'm having well, fun. Well, hopefully, we can put down the misunderstanding. And no, so it's, now, all, it's all water what? under the bridge, brother. Okay, that's fine. First, you said they can't, but now you correct yourself, which I respect. A good man who's humble will correct himself, and I probably correct myself. It doesn't we can't say we can and cannot. So now we put that argument aside. But let's come to the other argument. When I talked about 2 Maccabees 15, I want you to, I'm listening to you. So I'm trying to yeah, represent the argument. You said it's a vision. Then you said, well, okay, you know, having a vision of people on earth is one thing. But then communicating to saints while you're on earth is another thing. I was addressing at first your claim when I said in 2 Maccabees 15, 11 to 17, that Judas has a vision where he sees Onias, Jeremiah alive and praying for people on earth. You say, well, that's a vision. But now when I told you, Matthew 17, what happened with Jesus is a vision, but you wouldn't deny the reality. You didn't answer that question. So are you saying that if something is a vision, somehow it's not real? Uh, no, if I if I uh, misspoke or something like that, no, I believe visions are real. What I'm saying is, is that unless there is some sort of a vision, I don't see it in the Bible unless you can show me otherwise. But uh, when I when I, when I Bible? you go ahead, I'm confused with your answer. What do you mean? If I if Matthew 17, one to nine, it says Moses, Elijah, God, the father appeared, Jesus was transfigured and it really happened on a mount. But then Matthew 17, nine, Jesus says, tell no one the vision and you believe it's real. Mm -hmm. And then Maccabee sees Onias and Jeremiah praying for him, and it's in a vision. Now, somehow, what's your point? It's not real? No, I believe that it's real. Yes, I believe that it's real. I believe visions are real. What I'm saying is that when I typically read the Bible, and again, you guys are the experts, right? William, I speak Spanish no. as well. You know, tu habla español, yo hablo español, familia. Tu eres dominicano? No, no, para nada. Nomás aprendí español porque mi esposa viene de México. Entonces tuve que aprender español. <laughs> I had yeah. to learn Spanish. I told him I had to learn it because of my wife. I'm not a, I'm not native at I'm all. I'm liking JP now. This is kind of JP. I oh, like. Yeah, I like you too, brother. See, we oh, should have just know, had man. a conversation. I, I, J JP, I, I had to pick it up. I was forced to just picked it up. Uh, how is it? Is it okay? No, yeah, it's better than mine. That's oh, crazy. Cool. Mm -hmm. cool. Okay, now, all right. So, yeah, Sam, that's a good yeah. argument. I'll be honest. If you can show me an example. Now, I'm not saying I'm arguing from silence, but just from, from yeah. my thing because I'm learning. Um, well, and if you say I am, that's fair. But what I'm saying is, is that typically when I see a person from this realm speaking to a person from another realm, it appears to me that it's within the realm of a vision. It could be real, but it seems like God is somehow. And I'm pretty sure William can explain it with the early church. <laughs> JP, they, can, I, can, I, can I maybe make a comment, brother? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. OK, JP, let me just one particular thing. I, I, I went to the second Maccabees and I think we're, we're getting tripped up on is you're looking at the word vision and thinking it's kind of like a dream or something that he had limited to perhaps something that is not completely real or what have you. But that exact Greek word is utilized also in the gospel of St. Luke. And it's in reference to an actual spectacle. That is the way it's translated in the Greek in the new Testament. Yep. So I think vision, that particular word, I think you're reading into it your Western mindset. It yes. doesn't literally mean a kind of dream or anything. It means something that he physically saw, whether he had it, um, wh who knows how he would have seen it. Still yeah. a vision of a reality, JP. And I think that's something that you're missing. Yeah, and I'm going to prove it now because vision, because you keep saying it's a vision and I am keep saying, so what? The vision is still real and it's describing realities. 
unless you have something in a vision that's symbolic, but that symbol is also pointing to reality. I'm going to give you. I also believe it's real. Yeah. yeah but, uh, okay. Well, ahead. then, if you believe in real, then you believe that they're praying for people on earth. And since Judas <laughs> now knows they're praying for them on earth, then the next step, this is how you arrive at theology. Not everything is black and white. You know this better than most if you're doing apologetics. You read the Bible as a whole collectively, and then you draw inferences and come to correct conclusions when it comes to doctrine. But I just want to give you an example of a vision. Daniel 7, 13, 14. Oh, yeah. I kept looking in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, one like a son of man, and he came up to the Ancient of Days. Now, I don't need to read the rest of it. You know it. Here he has a vision where he sees one like a son of man riding the clouds of heaven, approaching ancient days. Jesus says he is that son of man who rides the clouds of heaven. Does he do it actually, or is it simply a vision and it's metaphorical? It's a vision, yeah. It's I think it's real. So now we have established a second case where a vision mm -hmm. is showing you reality. Let me mm -hmm. give you a third example. All right, let's go a third example. And Jesus claims to be that son of man, so I don't need to show you that. All right, Luke 24, 22 to 24. When the woman saw the angels at the tomb, when Jesus rose again, did they really see angels? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. No, but it says it's a vision right here. No, yeah, I believe visions are real, yeah. Okay, so now you now refuted your own argument. And I'm saying yeah, this. Yeah, let me ask William a question because William ahead, brought it. Go ahead, engage him, brother. I'm here. I'll, I'll moderate. Go ahead. He's Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So, so, William, I am curious to this because I believe visions are real. So what I'm saying is if somebody from this realm is communicating with somebody from another realm, and it's within visionhood, I believe it's real. For example, William, if God gives you a vision of a saint in heaven and you're communicating with that person within that vision, I'm not going to say that's fake. Also, I hear that there's reportings from Catholics, <laughs> Orthodox, that early church fathers of old have appeared to them in vision. So what I was going to present ahead. today, JP, uh, and God willing, the future... Uh, I'll do it. Uh, what I was going to present is early evidence from the early church of them believing that the great saints could intercede for us, including early apparitions. And I'm talking about very early, well before we even get to the 300. So it was believed. Here's here's the one thing that I emphasize a lot, JP. It was believed in early ancient Judaism. You've got it in, in the Old Testament. You've got it in the Targums. And it was taught, it, you've even got it in the New Testament times. Now, I would even argue for Revelation 5, 8 being, and, and I can argue that directly from the Greek, clearly being an example of intercessory prayer. So you've got all of these examples, and then you get to the early church, and every century you've got it. And I mean every century. There's never a break. You even get it when you get to the, here's my biggest issue, JP, and I just brought this up yesterday in my debate with a Protestant. You've got it in the proto-reformers. The great ones that are that are considered the greatest, Jan Hus, John Wycliffe. Then you get to the reformers, Luther, Zwingli, and the very first reformers. So my problem, JP, is what happened? When when does this evolution stop within Protestantism? You get to very late in the centuries, and now they're starting to shed these apostolic and ancient Jewish beliefs, but yet they were held for all of these centuries. So my problem, JP, look at it from my perspective. I see the evolution, the mutation of this, Protestantism shedding this later on in history, and then saying, well, we don't care about what these early fathers said. They were probably wrong. Well, apparently, they don't even care what the proto-reformers or first reformers taught. That is my main concern, and I think you understand. It is Let a legitimate ask you a concern. question, because that is interesting. I will look into that. That is interesting that you say that. I'd so be willing do you... to share any of my notes with you, JP. Any no, that's, that's fair. That's fair. So, so here's my question to you. Because I, cause I am legitimately curious. You made some excellent arguments. And I really mean that. I'm going to look back into those. So I'm glad we made progress with Good. visions being real. Because I, I, I think Sam did an excellent job proving it. And so did you, William. So my question to you, William, and this is not an I gotcha. I am legitimately curious. When we pray to God, is that in a state of vision? Or is that not a vision? So if so I pray to God right now, is that a vision? It would depend how you're utilizing vision. So vision is utilized multiple ways in the scripture. Now, if you use vision in that particular way, obviously not the way the biblical text uses it, because many okay. times vision is literally an apparition before them. So mm -hmm. it's just a varying usage. I don't believe you're having a literal vision right before you. You're directly communicating with God, though. So mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And don't worry, JP, there, there's nothing. And yeah, I'm not yeah, trying to be arrogant. Right. There's nothing wanna, you can do to, to get me a, in a gotcha moment, my friend. Well, I want to no, follow no, no. up on that argument because you said, okay, so if you're praying to God right now, you're not in a vision. But when you find examples of Isaiah, like Isaiah 6, and he has a vision, he sees Jehovah on the throne and he's communicating to him. You consider that him praying to God because he's communicating to God, correct? Absolutely. So then when Je Isaiah does not have the vision of God anymore, that means he shouldn't be praying to God because he's not seeing him in a vision? If, if Isaiah doesn't see him in a vision, he can continue to pray to God, yeah. Well, you just made our case for communion of saints. I don't have okay. to see a saint in a vision in order to ask that saint to pray for me because I know that's a reality. I can ask them to pray for me, just like I don't see God when I speak to him, but I know he hears. Interesting. Now, this is why I bring that up, because you guys are scholars, and I'm not saying that I'm to suck up to you guys. Thank you. All right. I'm not a scholar, but I okay, appreciate so, it. I'm not, I'm not. No, but this is, Sam, I actually really like you, brother. I didn't, you see, brother, all we need is a, William, I like you too, brother. You need you me know? here, man, to be if the middleman. It was you, you, if you go back, you started, you came and you want to challenge me to debate, you, you, you need me here as a middleman, man. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So what I'm saying is this, William, because uh, you made some excellent arguments. So where do we have an example of somebody praying to a saint in the Bible? And I know if it's arguing for silence, then correct. But if it's there, yeah. let me know. Yeah, Where sure. someone does pray to a saint in the Bible, and it's not within a vision hood. Okay. Yeah. Do, so do we have uh, that example? I'll, yeah, I'll let's say I'm going, then I'll, I'll piggyback. Before, yeah, okay, I want to say, notice you, you've already set the parameters of what constitutes as proof. For example, I'm trying to show you because I see you're learning. If a Muslim were to say to you and I, and I'm not trying to put you down because I'm saying you're open and humble. And I said, if I see repentance, I will treat you with respect by the grace of God. If a Muslim tells me, unless I find in the Bible that Jesus says I am God, then I will not accept the divinity of Christ. You would laugh at that. So what I'm trying to tell you as a young Christian brother, we don't want to use arguments and set up the way a question can be answered. And if it's not answered in this way, then it cannot be true because you're now imposing on the Bible an external <clears throat> standard of arriving at truth instead of looking through the scriptures and looking what the scriptures teach as a whole and then deriving your doctrine from the correct synthesis and analysis of what the Bible teaches as a whole. That's my first response to you. Secondly, the second response to you, even when you say the Bible, I want you to understand, young brother. And I say this with my with with love. You have assumed what the Bible is, and now you're using that Bible in order to then reject or accept the doctrine. What you need to do is take a step back, and you need to ask yourself the question. And this is why I changed my position. You need to take a step back, and you need to ask yourself a question. God inspired books for the church, but what mechanism did he use to discover those books are, because I hear a lot of Protestants, they straw man Catholics and Orthodox position. Catholics and Orthodox do not, do not teach that the church created the Bible or created the canon. Yep. What they say is the church was used by the spirit to discover the canon and to preserve the canon. Yep. So what you need to ask yourself is, who were these Christians that God used by his spirit to know what the canon is, Know what the scriptures are and canonize them. Because once you do that, you're going to see that these are the very men who believed in praying for the dead and intercession of saints. So are you saying they're all wrong? Question. So you said, and then I will respond to it, just a slight of variation correction. When you say praying to the dead, you mean, because um, you guys would say they're the not dead, dead, they're alive, right? Yeah, no, but the term, because when we say dead, we're talking about physically dead. Praying for the dead, meaning you'll find practices and you'll find it even in the second century, Tertullian refers to the practice of the church. They would pray for their dead loved ones who died in faith so that God would continue to refresh them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, all right, thank you for that clarification. So, um, what was your uh, first question? Because you made two. Yeah. What was My your first? first question is, you understand how you're setting the answer to the question that <clears throat> will lead you to accept what is true. You're using a form of argumentation, not saying you're doing it deliberately, where unless the Bible says it this way, then it oh, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. I got it. I got it. You get it now, right? Yeah. 
So, so no, you're like the Bible speak, but go ahead. No, yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's fair that one can make the argument that the 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 kind of argumentation that I'm making could elude that I'm arguing from silence. So that is fair. Yeah. But just for my own reference point, because yeah. William would know, I, I legitimately do not know. Is there an example? Because I and I'm not saying because this proves my doctrine. That's not what I'm saying. Sure. I'm I'm saying for life. reference. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to read something for you because I already have this in mind. But okay, now I'm going to see. This is a test. And if you explain, that's fine. You're free to do what you want. Somewhere in the Bible where you have someone speaking to a saint that has died on earth, but he's alive, right? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. After him, a wise son rose up who, because of him, lived in security. Solomon reigned in an age of peace because God made all his borders uh, Sam, Correction, I do believe it can happen. It happened with Elijah. It happened with Moses. Yes. So I believe it can happen. I mean, somebody in heaven. Yes. Well, before the Old Testament, I mean, before the New Testament, where do you think they were? Because I don't know what you believe. Uh, Abraham's bosom. Okay. So so you're saying if someone speaks to someone in Abraham's bosom, that's okay. But now after Christ, if they're in heaven, you can't talk to them? So again, notice how you're setting the parameters. Yes, Here's sir, someone that's who's dead. Someone who's dead. But I want you to see he's not going to speak to him. Pay attention. <laughs> Solomon reigned in an age of peace because God uh, made all his borders tranquil so that he might build a house in his name and provide a sanctuary to stand forever. How wise you were. He's talking to Solomon. When you were young, you overflowed like the Nile with understanding. Your influence spread throughout the earth. And you filled it with proverbs having deep meaning. Your fame reached to far off lands, and you were loved for your peaceful reign. Your songs, proverbs, and parables, and the answers you gave astounded the nations. In the name of the Lord God, who is called the God of Israel, you gathered gold like tin and amassed silver like lead, but you brought in women to light your side, and through your body you were brought into subject subjection. You stained your honor and defiled your family line so that you brought wrath upon your children and they were grieved at your folly. So he's speaking to Solomon, who's physically dead, and telling him about the greatness he had and his fall. So he's talking to, quote unquote, a dead man in a book considered scripture by many. But let me give you one more because now he's going to talk to Elijah. By all of the apostolic churches considered scripture. Yep. All that's, that's an interesting passage. So I'm going to look at it myself as you... Uh... He mm -hmm. now talks to Elijah. Mm -hmm. Elijah. This is Sirach, by the way. The book of Sirach. I didn't tell you mm -hmm. where. Then Elijah arose, a prophet like fire, and his word burned like a torch. He brought a famine upon them, and by his zeal, he made them few in number. Now, by the word of the Lord, he shut up the heavens, and also three times brought down fire. How glorious you were, Elijah, in your wondrous deeds, whose glory is equal to yours. You raised the corpse from death. And from Hades, by the word of the Most High, you sent kings down to destruction and famous men from their sick beds. You heard rebuke at Sinai and judgments of vengeance at Horeb. You anointed kings to inflict retribution and prophets to succeed you. It's talking to him in scripture. You were taken up by a whirlwind of fire and a chariot with horses of fire. And at the appointed time, it is written, you are destined. To calm the wrath of God before it breaks out in fury. To turn the hearts of parents to their children. Restore the tribes of Jacob. Happy are those who saw you and were adorned with your love. For we also shall share the live. It is passages that, like these that led Jews to believe that when Jesus cried out, Eli, Eli, they thought he was crying out to Elijah to come to his aid. So now what you ask for is in scripture. Now, are you going to accept it or are you going to explain it away? See, that's not up to you. No, 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 no. I'm not going to explain it away or anything like that. Uh, I, if I'm going to be honest with you, I want to take a look at it, see the context, because that is interesting. That is intriguing. So I'm not going to explain it away because I don't know what to explain away. And JD, so do, do you do you accept uh, the uh, the longer canon? Do you accept it? Yeah, I do. Oh, OK, good, man. Wow. I didn't know. Praise God. Well, well, let me ask you this, JP. I'm just curious. And, and if you don't want to answer, you don't have to. What is what is holding you back from either becoming Catholic or Orthodox? I'm just curious. It's got to be some things that you don't like. Well, you know some of the some of the Catholic dogmas. You know what I'm saying that, uh, or, or some of the canonized scriptures. You know, I think are a little hard to to, to canonize swallow. scriptures. So, so some of the Deuterocanon? No, 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 no. Excuse me. Some of the 
because I don't want to go there now. You know, but oh, some no, 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 that's fine. That's fine. I'm not gonna yes, look, look, just, 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 just give, me, give me one example. We're not gonna debate it. I just want to know one example, and maybe later we you can, can join William. Maybe yeah. you can get in contact, go with him and talk. Yeah. Fruit give me one quiet. example. One example. All right. Um one well, this doctrine here is one of them. Some of the Marian doctrines is another. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, that's another thing he struggles with, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so so some of those doctrines, you know what I'm saying? So, so sure. that's that's sure. the main thing. JP, why don't okay. you do this? Why don't you join him sometime yeah. during the week? You can go on your channel, his channel, bring up your objections on the Marian doctrines. Yeah, I'm yeah, trying do to that. do JP. I am trying to do, and, and now that I just finished my debate in Spanish, I'm trying to do at least one time a week or two times a month an open debate, open dialogue stream on Mariology, where you are free to join me um, and we can talk about any of the dogmas, perpetual virginity. Uh, I don't know if you accept Mary as Now, with that, God, when do you do that? Of, when do you typically uh, do that? I'm going to do it Monday. So, upcoming Monday, I'll be doing it. I'm going to have to now unblock this dude. I already did. I'm going to have to make JP one of my mods now. So, you know, that's there it. Right now. Yeah, Final man. thing, though. I, I, I didn't you. know you were this cool, man. I mean, this is yeah, crazy. Bro, uh, hey, hey, you, you need I me around. At you. Just let me give you context. I came harsh at you because in my comment section, you said, hey, I want to debate you. So, I take that as someone trying to want to punk me out. That's just my issue. That's why I reacted the way I did. That was a while back. But forget no, that. That's my apologies. Maybe I shouldn't have come at it that way. Yeah, so that's that right. God forgive us. Forgive me and apologize. But now I'm going to change my tone because I said, if you come humbly, then I have to be gracious, just like the Lord is patient with me. But all I want to ask is this, because now the whole topic has changed now, now that there's not really to talk about unless. Well, oh, yeah. just... uh, tell me these verses. So it's Sirach 47. Sirach chapter 47, 48. Read those two chapters. Okay. Sirach. Uh, Second Maccabees 15, 11 to 17. Read that chapter. Well, Maccabees I was aware of, but yes. but I will I will read these. Okay, but here's my question for you, though. Okay, Let me ahead, ask you a question, brother. Because I'm not ahead. confused because he believes Maccabees. Then in Maccabees, you have Judas Maccabees offering sacrifices for atonement and praying for those who are slain. You accept that? Uh, believe it or not, now this is going to be a bit of a cop out for you, but the I, I take that text and I make it modernized today. So I myself, when somebody dies, I have at some point have said, God, have mercy on their soul, Lord. They didn't know what they were doing. So in that example, when he was praying for the, the fallen soldiers, I think that a lot of people in our culture today do that, right? Even Protestants do that, right? Oh Lord, have mercy so, on us. Let, let me, oh, let, let me for one moment, for, for one moment, let mm -hmm. me inter interject there. So I myself because, do that as well because yeah. I've done a lot of work in Second Maccabees. Here's the big problem mm -hmm. there: in that Judas Maccabees was not just saying, "Oh, you know," in that sense, he was rather praying for them to be loosed from sins. So it's not just a no. matter of oh, it, it's a, it's much more. He believes that they were undergoing a kind of suffering. And you can break that down by looking at the Greek text. So he's praying that they be loosed from their sins. Why? Because there is a hope of resurrection one day. Yeah. So he's hoping that they be loosed from the sins. So there's much more to that text than I think that you are gathering. Oh, yeah, and, and William, I hear it. you there. William, I hear you there. That's an excellent argument. But I guess I could say that he was doing it, the passage. And again, you could say this is arguing from silence. But I would say that the passage nowhere says that it's effective. Right. Like I do that as well. Like when 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 I know that there's somebody that is in my family, a friend of mine that died and went to hell that I know well, this guy was a I do pray that I go, Lord, have but, mercy. On, but you're incorrect. You know? But you're incorrect. He does say he actually yes. does say it's effective. He says, That's, yeah, That's yeah he I'm says that there's a hope of their rising again, a hope of a resurrection. Yeah, but even before before that, William, it says yeah. the author says that what he did was very noble and honorable. Yep. He praises us as something pleasing. Here, let me read it for you. That's why I was going to share. That, Here it correct. is. In doing this, he acted very well and honorably. He's being praised for doing this. If it yep. was not something praiseworthy, then <clears throat> the author would not have mentioned it because he's not done about praiseworthy to me, but it was praiseworthy inside of God because that's vantage point who matters. For if you were not expecting that those that had fallen would rise again, it would have been superfluous and foolish to pray for the dead. But if he was looking to the splendid reward that is laid up for those who fall asleep in this, it was a holy and pious thought. He's being praised for that. But he's being yep. praised for offering a sin offering. It's right here. Sin offering. So he's being praised. Now, if you believe this is scripture, 
unlike some Protestants. That means yeah. God inspired the author, the Spirit inspired the author to say what he did was praiseworthy and noble and honorable. Yeah. The text does say that they they fell asleep in godliness, correct? Suggesting they were saved, correct? That well, correct. it says they were killed for idolatry. Right. Right here. Then under the tunic, each of one of the dead had found sacred tokens of the idols of Jamnia, which the law forbids the Jews to wear. So what it was is they mixed their piety with idolatry. They were syncretistic, meaning they worshiped the true God, but they also invoked the gods and goddesses of Jamnia, which is forbidden. And sadly, you have people, sadly, even today, and uh, William, I'm sure you probably know this, you have people who engage mixed Catholicism with uh, voodooism, Santernalia. No yeah, you've got that very present in Mexico. Okay. So here you have a group of Jews who are zealous for God, love God, the God of Israel. That's why they're fighting to reclaim the temple. But now they mix their worship with idolatry, and that was evil, and God struck them dead. But what Judas is hoping is, even though they commit idolatry and God struck them, because here it says, so you know, people think I'm yep. in it up, all right? And it became clear to all that this was the reason these men had fallen. That God had them killed because of their idolatry. And that's when they feared the Lord and praised them. But what Judas is hoping is, even though they commit idolatry, which was a mistake, and God punished them temporally, he punished their idolatry. He's hoping that because they were still zealous for God and worshiped the God of Israel and fighting in the army to reclaim the temple, God Your would now accept be prayer and sin offering yep. that God will now forgive them in the afterlife and then grant them immortality. Yep. Do you guys believe that, um, and this is my curiosity, because this this would be interesting. Do you believe somebody that goes to hell has an opportunity to go to heaven? No, if, not at if, hell. No? Not in hell. All right, so not do you think these men went to hell? No. That's since they died in idolatry? No, no, that's what William's point is. If they weren't in the hell, they'd be superfluous. Go ahead, William. You can answer. Yeah, no, no, that's the, that's the exact point that I'm making. If they were hell, if they were in hell, as he tells us right here, there really would be no point in even praying for the repose of their souls, for them to be loosed from the sins that they committed. He believes that they can be forgiven. Indeed, he tells you, you brought it up right there, uh, JP, they fell asleep in godliness. Remember, right before we get there to 2 Maccabees 12, 42 and beyond, we're told we know they went to war to fight defending the one true God of Israel. They believe and they worship the one true God. But unfortunately, they had those idols, whether as good luck charms or, or whatever, some scholars believe they had them as good luck charms, that they had stolen as booty from other wars that they had fought in, either which way they'd had idols and they were killed, struck down because of that. But the author tells us that they died in godliness. So there is that hope of them being loosed from that sin, not of oh, them can being I ask condemned. You, can I ask you this question? Because I wanna I wanna know with how you interpret this with your Catholic uh lens, with purgatory as well, which Purgatory, sure. I, I heard your debate with Michael Brown. I mean, I honestly don't see, I don't want to say the point, but it just seems it's just a quick purge of your sins. So I, well, I mean, you know, here, I'll, I'll pose the exact same but question before I we, pose to him. Before to we go to purgatory, I want to understand this. So, from my point of view, when one dies, whether and, and if they made it to heaven, if one dies, they're in heaven. And they're forgiven, right? They're in heaven. They're good. Wait, wait so a minute. If, Hold on. I need clarification. Because mm -hmm. what you just said, and Sam can confirm, you just said that if one dies, they go to heaven immediately? No matter what? Is that what you're saying? Oh, I see what you're saying. So I'm you confused. would say that there's a purgatory, right? Well, I mean, there. I'm just confused, though. You do believe in hell, right? Or no? Oh, it's sorry. Thank you for that clarification. Believer. A believer. A believer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a believer. Okay. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, no, I'm not a universalist. I I heard. I, heard I don't know people. because there are some that are. I'm not trying to insult you. There are some. No, no worries, okay. no worries. Okay, so okay. when one dies, right? I believe when a Christian dies that they go to heaven, right? Mm -hmm. So if they're in heaven, um, and they died as a Christian, then there really is no need for me to pray that God have mercy on them for their sins. They're in heaven. Now, the reason I asked you to explain this with your Catholic lens is because are you seeing this as these people died, then were in a state of purgatory, and therefore he prayed for them while they were in a state of purgatory, and yeah. then they went to heaven. Is that what you're saying? 
Yes, that's correct. Uh, so okay. that's that's what I believe you can extrapolate from here. And I think it's evidently clear as well in 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians 3, you read of different examples of different men. Those men that built with bad material, those that built with material that represents the Temple of Solomon, that are good, precious materials. So he draws a parallel. Those that built with poor material, wood, hay, and straw, they undergo a purification. Now, this is on Judgment Day. There's no way around it. This yeah. is on you know, Judgment Day. This is interesting Day. because basically, essentially, that could be a text that proves purgatory, essentially. I, 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 and here's the one thing that I have discovered, JP. And I challenge that, you that would be the here. only way to me that the text would make sense. So you know let me what I'm just saying? say this. Obviously, and, I'm not, yeah, and, and I challenge Dr. Brown to this. And as you saw the debate, mm -hmm. he, ha he had no answer. I've looked at every early father, not some that merely quote a little bit of it and, and give no exegesis. All of them that provide a reading and exegesis into that text, and they all provide a purgatorial reading of it. All of them from the very beginning throughout history, going to the medieval era. That to me is incredibly powerful. That is so powerful, JP. That when you get to Calvin, Calvin is fuming when he begins to exegete 1 Corinthians 3. He realizes the fathers interpreted that as purgatory. So he pretty much trashes those fathers because they interpreted it that way. I mean, that that is yeah. shocking, JP. Let me let me add some more comments because you're asking good questions. And if you have that, I'm not a purgatory expert, but if you show me a text, I'll be honest with it. But I'm if, if there's a text that clearly explains purgatory, then I'll accept it. But I'm not a, a purgatory expert, so that's yeah, not my... Me neither, but I want to add to what he's saying here. Number one, if those who are in heaven don't need your prayers, and those in hell cannot benefit from your prayers. So what he's saying here, to extrapolate, is that means there's something in 2 Maccabees 12, 39 to 45 that shows if they are in Abraham's bosom resting, they don't need sacrifices. But if they're in hell, tormented for being unbelievers like the rich man, then the prayers and the sacrifice will do them no avail. So remember what I said, how people derive their doctrine by inference. So if they're in heaven, these who are slain, then your prayers and sacrifice useless. They're in heaven. Or we'd say Abraham's bosom, like Lazarus was in rest, Luke 16, you know it. But if they're tormented like the rich man, that means he's condemned. He's not coming out. Yep. So then these individuals... Can't be in heaven, but can't be in torment because if they're in heaven, like you said, they don't need your prayers. If they're in torment, Hades at that time, which will be held in the future, then you can't pray them out. So that means there has to be, this is the inference that's being drawn, that here the Jews are aware. And if you believe Maccabees is scripture, and this is something they already knew before it's written, because the writer is writing after the fact, meaning this was already done and he's recording it and he's saying this was noble. The Jews must have been aware that there must be an aspect of the afterlife where people are not destined to eternal destruction, hell forever, and they're not in heaven. They're this in-between state that they can be redeemed out of. Yeah. This is the end. This is where some people say that Jesus Christ preached to people in the abyss before because th there was a chance these That's people could have, correct? Yeah, Romans 10, 6 to 7, 1 Peter, that's some, yes. So this is what he's trying to get at. These were the passages that the Christians yeah. looked at because they accepted as scripture. They're seeing this, well, this is scripture. We know in the light of the New Testament, if they're in hell, they're not coming out. Yep. And if they're in heaven glorified like Paul and Peter, they don't need our prayers. We need their prayers. That's the point of intercession of saints. There, does, there must be then this some in-between place where they're not in heaven, they're not in hell, and yet you can pray them out of that condition to now enter into the fullness of the rest of the Lord. This, so is, this is not necessarily purgatory. This is another place, correct? Because from oh. where I hear William explain it, because I do watch William from time to time, purgatory seem, and some other Catholics, purgatory seems to be something that's instantaneously. Like it's like, it's oh, boom. No, I never well, said he'll, that. He'll tell you. Go ahead. Now, why am I coming to you? No, so per, so I could be in purgatory for two, three, four years in, in theory? No, yes. no, no. I, I said that uh, purgatory that we don't know of the concept of time in the afterlife. And I said, the length of one's penance, of one's punishment in the afterlife, varies from person to person. Perhaps one person is instantaneously purged without any sense or concept of time, or perhaps one does have a very lengthy concept of time, as many of the saints believed, but we don't know exactly how time does work in the afterlife. 
So I, I've never once ever stated that purgatory must be instantaneous, yeah. rather rather the opposite. The fathers were he was talking about was First Corinthians three, saying there we're told that even on the day of judgment, that's correct. Saying, on the day of judgment, some will have to be purged by fire because it says, and they will be saved, but as going through the fire. But this is right. on that day, meaning day of judgment. So even in there. He's saying, according to how even the early Christians that canonized scriptures understood that passage. And do you know of anyone that dissented from that, William? No, not at all. And you've got the belief in purgatory so uh, from this the very mean, beginning. So this would mean the passages where people, there's a passage of a parable where there are people that are getting, um, uh, what is it, that they're getting hit or beat? You know what I'm saying? Some people received the lesser severe beating. Oh, Luke 12, 47, 48. You're talking about... So you would say that's probably in purgatory. Yeah, well, how would beating. you interpret that, William? He's talking about Luke 12, 47, 48, where Jesus says, yeah. the servant who knows the master's will and doesn't do it will be beaten with many blows, and the servant who doesn't will be beaten with fewer blows. Yeah, so there are particular passages like in Luke, and then there's a prison passage in the Gospel of St. Matthew, that you do have some fathers looking at those and providing a purgatorial reading of those. To be on, quite honest with you, JP, I think the strongest evidence, uh, of course, Second Maccabees and then First Corinthians three. I particularly, not that I don't think that you can extrapolate that from others. I think you can, but if we're sticking with the very powerful language of purification, it's right there before your eyes in First Corinthians three. There's really no getting around it. The fact that that the, the hypothetical man. Now, and I, I heard, I know the argument. Some people say, well, it's only talking about preachers. Whatever. If you want to include preachers, I think it's every man on Judgment Day. There's a particular man who has built poorly, meaning has sinned, has sins on his soul. In the afterlife, that particular man has got to undergo a fiery purification. Now, I'm not arguing for a literal fire. It could be metaphorical, the fiery love of Christ, as Pope Benedict believed. But either which way, the metaphorical language by St. Paul is clear. There's a fiery purification one has to undergo. But that man that undergoes that purification, he is saved. So Thesatai, he is saved. So I think that's incredibly powerful. In my opinion, I've never once seen a Protestant scholar be able to get around that text. And I tried for hours with Dr. Brown. He's a scholar, and I got no decent answer there. You can find somebody that can show me that that is not purgatory. I'd be willing to hear. I'm all ears. Yeah. Let me let me add some first for your journey. Like I said, I'm learning too. I, I'm where you're at. When he's the expert. So, but I want to add some for your journey as you meditate. Ask on, William something. So, but go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'll get the verses. Go ahead. I want to show cool, you this you. idea. But go ahead. So, in the text in Maccabees, to be fair, where Judas prayed for the people that potential, they went to they went to um, you know the the middle ground purgatory. Right. He wasn't communicating directly to them. He was praying for them. But that text right. does show evidence that there is such a thing as purgatory, because if there was no purgatory, then he praying for them would be redundant. Correct? Yeah. Correct. Because verse 46 is very clear. Uh, let, let me look, look for 45 and 6. And as you look it up, I want to add some. It's not ahead, only brother. because if you read the text carefully, JP, it says he sent money. So the priest would offer a sin offering to the temple. What does that mean? That means the priest also accepted this concept. 100%. One, now understand that, the implication. Key. I want to understand. Let me show the passage again. Yeah, that's very key. Up. Yeah, I'm glad you're doing it, brother, because I was flipping back and forth. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring it up. But I okay. want to, everyone to understand the implication. It says, he sent money. Let's see here. He also took up a collection, man by man, to the amount of 2,000 drachmas of silver, sent it to Jerusalem to provide a sin offering. Meaning he's sending money to the priests. Now, if this was totally alien to the law of Moses and contradictory to the law of Moses, that means not only Judas is sinning, the whole priesthood is sinning because they're accepting the money to make sacrifices for those who have died. But we know Judas wasn't sinning because the victory was given to him by God. And our Lord honored this victory by observing Hanukkah. Yep. So why are the priests involved? If it's a sin, it's an excellent argument. I have to, I have to, I, I, I'm not a purgatory expert or anything like that. Neither. So, but, but that is interesting. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, even yep. Rabbi Eduardo told me that uh, the Jews had some practices where they did uh, seek blessings 
from rabbis of old. So yeah, exactly. let me let me, let me briefly yeah. touch upon that. So JP and and I know the the particular argument somebody like Dr. Brown would bring up to try and rebut that. Uh, and let me rebut his particular argument. He will argue, well, yeah, modern day Judaism, as they've moved away uh, from ancient Judaism. The problem with that is we can show ancient Judaism practices, and if we can go in a line and show it's taught also in the Targums and taught all throughout history, not a novelty of the modern day era, well, then you're in a big, big bind there because it's taught all throughout history. Uh, I think that's the way of showing. Yeah, and I have a post on that. Let me give it to you. Someone, I yep. think you sent me the article and I posted it. I think I did. It. Yeah, I think I did. Uh, in terms about in Judaism, about intercession of those who have passed on. That's correct. And how they pray for those on earth. In fact, one of the passages they used was what Matthew quotes, Rachel weeping for the slaughter of the innocents. Right, yeah. In Matthew 2. I'll, I'll show you that. That's actually something used by even Jews. While you're uh, looking for that, Williams, yeah, there was a woman... Early, uh, I don't want to say church father, but she was a church mother who who prayed for her brother. Her brother was in purgatory, and yeah. um, the one that got her neck sliced. Remember, you're, ta you're talking about perpetual and felicities. Is that correct? Th that would yeah. be her. That would be uh, an argument for. Um, yeah, he's she's praying for her brother seeing, Dino Crotty. This guy's on his way, man. You're already seeing it. Th I mean. There we go. Yeah, and she's praying for her brother Dino Crotty, and it, that's clearly purgatory because if you notice that. He, before undergoing the purification, she prays and prays and prays and prays. And after a while, she finally has a vision of him no longer having the bodily scars that he once had and no longer being in a place of darkness, but rather being in a place of light, uh, showing very clearly that he has been purified, he has been cleansed, and um, he is now in the place of light, drinking now, from the endless not, stream of water. Has she not prayed for him? Would he still went to heaven eventually? She sped up the process, correct? Because if you're in purgatory, I, I, I would, you're going would to argue, heaven, right? Right, yes. I would argue that the process would have been sped up. That's correct. Yes, exactly. Because okay. those in purgatory will end up in heaven with Christ. That's, that's correct. So purgatory means it's a process of purification that yeah. the Lord in his mercy has procured their post-mortem cleansing because the Lord cleanses us on earth. Now, every Protestant agrees. That. That's why I had some verses. Now, by the way, JP, I sent you the link in private chat and I've sent it to everyone else. This is an article by a Jew, not a pro, uh, Catholic. Meyer Bar Ilan, during the first centuries of the Common Era. Prayers of Jews to angels and other intermediaries. Where? First centuries, meaning time of our Lord, and shortly thereafter, the Jews are invoking angels and intermediaries to pray for them. And he gives you a whole slew of references. This is a Jewish article, folks. Showing this practice is not unique to Christianity. Christians inherited it from the Jews. So there's the article. But the concept of purgatory, everyone believes, Protestants believe it. I mean, that's why I had these verses lined up for you. And I'll show yep. it to you. That the Lord, though he died to cleanse us of sin, still he will <clears throat> inflict temporal punishments on us in order to draw us to repentance and to restore us to fellowship. So the idea that the Lord could discipline, chasten, rebuke those whom he loves because of unrepentant sins, every Protestant believes that because it's in the scripture. The debate is, does that extend to the afterlife? That's the only debate. Yep. The debate isn't whether, even though I've trusted Christ and his blood cleanses me, does he still inflict discipline, chastening, rebuking, though he has procured my salvation forgiveness? You know, I actually believe, if you don't mind me, and, oh, and this, is, this is going to be controversial, but I believe that the text, and obviously I might get a lot of flack for this, but even without using the book, of the, the, the second canon, as they call it, there is a passage that says God will render to everybody for what they did in the body for the yes. good and the bad. For second so, purpose. Yeah, that suggests that you're going to get good, but you're going to get bad. And I don't know how that bad looks like. <laughs> so, well, well, let me tie it in with what he was saying. That's where 1 Corinthians 3 comes in. Yep. Now, let me tie it in with what he said. See, good. You're seeing it. I'm going to show you the scripture. So Protestants agree that there is a chastening, rebuking, disciplining, a correcting on earth where they debate is, well, does it happen after you die? Now, many Protestants will be shocked. There are now... A growing number of Protestants say yes. One of the most famous is Dr. Jerry 
Walls. Yep. He's a Protestant. He's now writing books from a Protestant perspective showing the idea of postmortem purgation is biblical and historical as a Protestant who's not a Catholic. Because he also wrote a book critiquing the Catholic Church. Okay. Now let me go with what he's saying, JP. Here's the passage, guys. 2 Corinthians 5.10. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive recompense for what, he's been, well, for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. This is what you're referring to. Even the evil will be rewarded for. This now ties in with what William was saying, 1 Corinthians 3, 11 and 15. Now let's tie it in. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one that has been laid. That foundation is Jesus Christ. Now if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay straw, the work of each builder will become visible for the day will disclose it. Now, if you read in Paul, JP, do a search. Don't take my word for it. The day always refers to the day of the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes. Yep. So it's not about the day of judgment. That's when we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For the day will disclose it because it will be revealed with fire. So here's that fire that will either destroy your work showing these works were bad. So you're not going to get a reward. Or if your works were solid and your motives are sincere, they'll go through the fire, purified, you receive reward. But the part he was referring to, which the early church focused on, is this. Because it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each has done. If what has been built on the foundation survives, the builder will receive a reward. Now, here's the key, and I'm going to tie it in with First Peter. If the work is burned, the builder will suffer loss, the builder, the builder will be saved, but only as through fire. Yep. And according to you, William, you have documented this. And as far back as you can go in church history, from the Orthodox, not heretics, how do they interpret this passage? They as interpret far? it as purgatorial from the very beginning. Even if, even if, and to be fair, even if they said that this, that they won't go through fire in and of itself, they are going through something that's like yep. fire. Right. Yes. They're being punished. They're being punished in the afterlife. Mm -hmm. Like William said, the fire doesn't have to be a literal fire. It may be a right. metaphor. Yeah. No, yeah. This text, listen, I'm a, I'm a fair man. This text is very, very clear. That is, so. Both texts, both texts, listen, I'm not pushing. Those texts are very, very clear. In fact, I would say purgatory may be a little bit more clear than intercession of the saints, in my opinion. Oh, that's you know fine. what I'm saying? But, yeah. um, and even, now look, I'm not being disrespectful or anything like that, but even right. if you were to say there is no purgatory, you cannot read these texts and deny that there is some sort of a consequence for yep. your bad there's, actions. You know what no I'm saying? Doubt. There's no doubt. And this about is that. why this is why and, and and this is this is interesting. A lot of people say, Oh, how about the people that were murderers and the people that 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 did terrible, terrible things yeah. and accept the Christ exactly. in their last moments? Yeah. I always tell them. I love them, that example. I love it. Yeah, I always tell them, well, not so fast. They're going to have to face the living God. Yeah, they'll make it to heaven, but you eventually they're going to have to face God. Especially, if, you, especially if, you, if they accept, let's say they accept Christ on uh, uh, their deathbed, God, you know, the Lord final God. words, uh, you, you need to be, as, as Revelation 21 is very clear, you need to be completely clean in order to be to enter heaven. Clean, and nothing enter. unclean, nothing unclean can enter heaven. So yeah, uh, you're already it's reasoning. very clear. I don't mean to cut you off, but you already, right, I'm noticing a pattern with you and me. I started this journey thinking the way you did. I'm letting you know, this is how it was over 10 years ago. I started thinking the way you did, and all these passages troubled me. It's not going to be long, brother. You're going to come. But let me show you how fire can be used to purify without harming you. I'm going to give you an example. I'm not saying this is purgatory, but how God uses even fire to purge and purify you so you can be worthy to stand in his presence without that fire harming you. Isaiah 6, 5 to 7. Watch. Isaiah 6, 5 to 7. And I said, woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts, meaning I am unworthy because of my sinfulness to stand before God. So remember what he said about Revelation 21? No unclean thing will enter. Revelation 21 if you read 22 to 27, all right. So what does God do? Does he say, no, you're forgiven? Watch how he purges them. Then one of the Sarahs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongues. This is a hot burning coal to burn the sacrifices in heaven. Yep. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted. 
meaning God had to purge him with this burning coal in order to purify him to stand before God and be his spokesperson. That's correct. But the fire did not harm him. Fire did That's not an harm him. That's an excellent verse. So there JP, I, I'm excited at being able to talk with you about the Marian dogmas. Um, there's brother, be honest, there's nothing to rebut anymore. I mean, it's over. So no. if you guys want to ask questions, I can I have another 40 minutes. We're going to take you can ask questions. JP. Yeah, I got about I got about 15 and I, and I got to go. 15? I got 15 because my daughter's going okay. to take her. To yeah, the we got 15. Minutes. If you want to ask some questions, 15 minutes, we're done, yeah. man. I'm going to have to retitle it. I'm going to make you a mod, JP. Yeah. Uh, brother, yeah, uh, 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 one, one second, JP. What I would like to do, brother, maybe this week or next week, I still want to do the presentation for the edification of the people of the course. Yes. So we'll, All right, we'll, so we'll may I ask that. one more question and then I'll get out of here? As Go many ahead. as you can, 15 minutes, brother. I'll, I'll be okay. here. By the so, way, in the private chat, send your information with each other so it can bring you Yeah, up. I'll send you my email. Uh, it's very right. simple. I mean, william at patrusicpillars.com. Okay, uh, sounds like a plan. Just, just to send it. I get yeah, a lot of emails, brother. Send it in caps private, and I'll get it. it? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah it's in the private chat. Go ahead. Put it like in all, all right. caps yeah, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll grab it first, brother. All right, so this is my question to you. And, and and I know it's 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 a bit of a a bit of a big question, but if you can make a five minute, I mean, it's going to be very tough. You're going to be like, "Whoa, come on!" Yeah, I'm scared. Uh, what's the issue with the Orthodox and the Catholics? Oh what's man, the, you you, know, you, you, you can you're make trying, five you're minutes. Try, you're trying to cause a, a fight. Okay, look. no, 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 no. no. Okay, you, look, if, I am. If I it's am, too controversial, no, you no, don't no, have no, to. No, 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 no. I want to start off by number one saying, over in my channel and here in Sam's, I've got a load of Orthodox mods. Eastern yeah. and Oriental. I am near and dear friends with a lot of them. And I'm going to break it down for you. Give me one moment. I wrote a book on the Eucharist with two top scholars, an Eastern Orthodox one and an Oriental. They provided chapters in the book. I am near and dear friends with them. I don't get into polemics where I say, man, you're damned or man, y'all are, are horrible. But despite that, we are, unfortunately, we have a broken body and a pray for unity every day. The apostolic church is to one day be one again. We have, we do have differences. Unfortunately, nowadays, um, there are differences such as the papacy is one. Uh, the filioque is another one. And um, not in all circles. You're going to find a lot of their scholars have no issue with purgatory. Purgatory was taught at some of their top pan-Orthodox synods. But unfortunately, there are some circles that deny today. Remember, Eastern Orthodoxy is not just one, one church. There are various uh, fractures there as well. And then the other thing would be certain Eastern Orthodox, not all, some also deny the Immaculate Conception of Mary, whereas others accept it. So there are differences there. Yeah. Unfortunately, and, and, you know, God willing, one day those differences will be... Uh, We'll, uh, we'll be put to well, the side. We'll ask come together. You a question before you, Definitely, uh, brother. because though they don't believe Macklin, because he may not realize because of their yeah. concept of original sin. But do the Orthodox deny that the Holy Spirit kept Mary from actually sinning? Not they do not deny it at all. They believe Mary had a completely sinless life. Let me be very yeah. clear. They have a different conception of original sin, and they have a different conception of perhaps um, the consequences of that. And certain other little issues that uh, that I truly believe at the end of the day, I don't think they should separate us. I really, really don't. I think the language is a lot of it is is uh, we're utilizing very Latin language and they're utilizing a different language. And I think that at the end of the day, we can come to the table and agree on a whole lot more than we disagree on. And I want to say this publicly, JP, forgive me, brother, for uh, likewise, brother. No, I, I just like I said, one thing about me, brother, I don't want you don't need to apologize uh, when someone comes and challenges me. I go into fight mode. I don't know what it is, but I want to apologize. Forgive me. God bless you and your mother. I didn't mean Amen. to insult your mother. I just wanted to give you a taste of what it's like when someone I take is insulting Mary. No justification for it because I know you don't mean to insult Mary because you don't think the Bible teaches it. But see, to me, because I'm now convinced when someone criticizes Mary, I try to give them a taste of my own medicine by toying, showing them what it's like to disrespect someone's mother. No justification for it. I apologize. Forgive me. I said even before, if you come humbly, I will embrace you. So, brother, I'm going to make you a mod. If this is how you come, we can have discussions. But the expert on Catholicism, not me. I'm like you. I'm on a journey learning. I mean, I'm in the Catholic Church. But I'm saying I don't know. But I've been convinced that the truth is in the Orthodox and the Catholic Church. And even me, I need to study filioque and papacy.
but I'm in a good place because I got we, this. We, we will do. We will do a show in the paper scene in the future. Yes. And one we'll of these days, one. I'll have you on my channel, and it's gonna say, "Come challenge the Catholic expert William." And I'll yeah, allow he's good. Let's do it, brother. I'm not Let's the man, JP. Open, when you ask me about Catholic, debate. you're. Yep. I don't mean to cut you up, brother. I just want to say I'm oh, not yes. the expert. That's why I don't know why people come to me. He's the expert, and I don't say it in front of him. I think he's the best apologist of any Catholicism today. That's my Thank opinion. You, so uh, forgive me, brother. Love you. I'm going to make you a mod. And sorry for the miscommunication. And, and and listen, man, this is something that the reason that I came up here, and this is why I realized that you guys are sincere, is because you didn't take an opportunity to say, sick, kill JP, and you didn't jump on the train. You said, wait a minute. He didn't do that good. He misquoted the church fathers, and you kept it 100 you didn't you didn't jump yeah. on the bandwagon to bring me down. Yeah, I, I don't sure. do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, I, I gotta I gotta be honest. If a brother doesn't do well, I, I'm not gonna come into a show and, which I'm, uh, it shows your honesty. It shows your honesty. So 100%. you know what I'm saying? I appreciate well, you that. want to be shocked, JP. You want me to tell you what I just did? I just blocked sick from my channel and from my uh I just blocked him. What did he do? Uh he wants he wanted to come in and I guess he wanted to engage JP. So I blocked him from StreamYard. He jumped on, I didn't give him permission. And he wouldn't stop chiming in in the comment section because I think he wants to do what they call a uh, safe face after the debate. So I blocked him. So that just tells you I'm an equal opportunist. I blocked him. Right. Fair enough. All right. So I'm going to upload this. Let the world know. Yeah, that it, it, it. It's all and clip it where Sam Shamoon apologized and asked for forgiveness. Not because I want, yep. I just want people to know. I don't try to be mean for the sake of being mean. I don't. I don't want that. But at times I have to be the way I am. But anyway. Well, William, pray for me and 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 Sam, because obviously we both struggle with pride. You know what I'm saying? Tell me about oh, it. Hey, no, no hey. doubt, brother. Hey, come on, man. I need prayer as well, brother. I mean, mm -hmm. I need prayer no matter what, because uh, I'll tell you one thing. After the debate I had yesterday, the amount of my, my phone is blowing up with people uh, insulting and what have you. I mean, I get it all the time. Uh, look, at the end of the day, uh, you know. It is what it is. We do this for the glory of God. We don't do it for any honor. Everybody in the chat, everybody's saying glory to God. This was yeah, edifying. Right. So this I is how God. it's supposed to be. Discussion mm -hmm. like Amen. this, no animosity. But like I said, Lord, forgive me. When you came saying I want to debate you, I took it as you're trying to show like, hey, I can put you in your place. God, have mercy on me. And again, forgive me, brother. I will not do that again. But the expert on Catholicism, not me. It's him. So Let's do it, JP. We'll, we'll do something, JP. And by the way, I, I bring out the very best in Sam. Brothers in arms for yeah, a reason. you do that. Yeah, actually, you do. I do. I do. Brothers well, in well, arms for a reason. I said, amigo, cuídese. Igualmente. Love you guys, Igualmente. Love you guys brother. Now, you JP, you're gonna be, I'm going to make you a mod right after I go on my channel. So you got free yeah, rank. Sure, for sure. And, you got uh, it, brothers. I'm going to head out, brothers, because I got to I gotta take my daughter uh, yeah. to the park. I'm going to make one final all. answer because I'm going live. So you guys. You got it, brother. God bless you. I'll talk to you all in a bit. God bless you, brother. God bless you, brother. Guys, I'm going live again. I'm not done. I'm going live in about an hour and 30 minutes. See, I told you, if he came humbly, I'm going to have to accept and apologize. So he's a brother. He's on a journey. I didn't know this. Pray for me, God. Destroy my pride, my arrogance, my flesh. You see? Now, if Anthony Rogers, that cow, repents, we'll forgive him too, that slop. But he's got to believe it's been destined for him. So, guys, go here. Go here. I'm live in an hour and a half. I'm live in an hour and a half, God willing. I will be with Chris Claus refuting alleged Bible contradictions. Don't miss it. My day is beginning, but pray for me. I need to get to cardio. I need to do cardio. I need to burn calories. I haven't done any cardio in a week, man. I'm starting to look like, you know, William. No, I'm just kidding. William is, is fit. So go here. I'll be here. Lord willing, hour and a half refuting alleged Bible contradictions. Pray for the Spirit to anoint me and fill me, and I'll try to stream it on Rumble. Lord willing, see you soon. Pray God will bless my daughters and I, miraculous security, safety, protection, and health. Spirit, seal us to love Jesus, obey the Lord Jesus, not shame Jesus, and die glorifying the Lord. The Lord bless that young lady in my life and provide for us to do ministry. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Christ is risen, risen indeed. Have mercy on us, and Lord, bless JP and preserve him. For the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. There is the link. It's on his YouTube, but I'll try to stream it on Rumble. So let's get ready to rumble. Love you guys. Hour and a half. Pray for us. God, give me clarity of speech. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Father, Son, and Spirit, we love you. There you go.